it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. South Africa and welcome to Afternoon Express. My name's Jeannie D, or as Bonnie would say, Jeannie Maboleng D. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Danilo Christo. Welcome to the show, everybody. You know, July has been a month of celebrations. Uh, recently, the Archbishop er Emeritus Desmond Tutu and his wife uh, just celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. That's their diamond anniversary. And yesterday, he was just released from hospital after spending about a week there. So our well wishes to him as he recovers and to his wife and himself on that incredible, incredible milestone. So we are celebrating again today. Absolutely. And and also, Good Hope FM has turned 50 years old. I mean, wow. what an, a fantastic achievement. If we add both of our ages together, that's about 50 years. It, well... Well, you're a little older than me, <laughs> yeah. so I suppose. Give, it, give and take a bit. And to celebrate this momentous occasion, uh, we have some of Cape Town's finest radio personalities in the loft with us. We've got Graham White, Sandra mm -hmm. Rosenberg, Sean O, Guy McDonald. It's going to be amazing. And if you want to connect with them or uh, send them well wishes, we are going to be taking all of your phone calls today. Also, tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag Afternoon Express <laughs> and uh, make a comment on our Facebook page. But Bonnie's also here. <laughs> Good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Mbouli. Today on the show, we follow the story of a Mozambican rescue, a dog who was rescued in Mozambique and given a second chance at life in Johannesburg. A truly heartwarming story, so you don't want to miss that. And joining us in the kitchen today is Willie's. The, 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 the Woolies product developer, Nikki Russell. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's lovely to be with you. Awesome. Lovely yeah. to have you. So today we're making a fr delicious fruity cake. It's actually a pear ginger and yes. yogurt cake. Mm -hmm. Really celebrating winter and pears are in season. So we're going to enjoy baking together, I'm sure. Awesome. Sounds exotic. For now, let's head back to the couch with Danilo with our first guest. So guys, 1965 was a year of tragedy in so many parts of the world. It was the height of the Vietnam War. It saw the passing of some of history's most famous people, including Winston Churchill, iconic jazz musician Nat King Cole, a famous South African poet, Ingrid Jonker, uh, who took her own life as well at that time. But amongst all the death and suffering in the heart of Cape Town, right here, 1965 saw the birth of a small local radio station. Now, 50 years later, they are going stronger than ever. Joining us on the couch are some of Good Hope FM's best love radio personalities, Shono, Guy McDonald, Guy McDonald, oh. Sandra Rosenberg, and Graham. I'm going to make you nervous. I'm I sorry know, about guys. That. It's so exciting to be part of the family again. Good Hope reunites on the couch. You know, Jeannie is also one of your ex-presenters. I'm not one of the newbies uh, in the station. So, 50 years, yeah. It's really awesome to have Ma and Pa here as well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's actually start with Pa then. Uh, Graham, obviously, being with the station the longest out of yeah. uh, pretty much everybody here, Good Hope FM as a station has grown in so many ways. What are some of your memories of Good Hope back in the day? Well, I mean, it's 50 years, a long time. I've been with the station for the better part of 25 of those years. Wow. And it's changed a lot. Um, mm. At the time I joined, there were people like Mark Gilman who'd just come on board. Mm. Uh, and I think the, the reason the station has survived, it's, it's reinvented itself almost every yeah. two or three years. Yeah. And there's always new talent coming in. Um, the management through the years have always brought on mm. creative mm. people. And... It, it constantly evolves. So it's almost like a new station every two or three years, and that's mm. why it survived. Your old tour has also changed quite yeah. a lot in, in your time frame on Good Hope. So tell us about your journey through the station. Well, I mean, it's changed a lot. In terms of, you know, radio in those days, we were still playing with turntables. You'd sure. play vinyl, for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Seven singles. We'd have things called carts, which are like eight-track tapes. Mm -hmm. um, and everything was manual. Nowadays, it's uh, much more computerized. You, you know mm. what it's like. You sit in front of a, a desk, and you've got a console. You've got a few buttons and you're pressing one or two things with a mouse. Sure, In those yeah. days, everything was manual. Wow. Uh, and you'd have to take your respect and your hats to, off to... Um the guys who started the station mm. in the 60s. Because mm. music in the 60s, if you look at the average track, was around two, two and a half minutes. Mm. If you're playing Beatles or Rolling Stones, 
and you were doing everything manually. So you would have a full yeah. workout. Quick yeah. time to change between yeah. songs. Now you've got four or five minutes or so oh, to get them relaxed, done. Yeah. And a half an hour mix or so to go to the loop. Yeah, yeah. that's changed. <laughs> it's changed a lot. It has changed. So Shauna, obviously, it uh, was a big year for you last year, having won the best commercial show, uh, afternoon drive show. Tell us about your journey through Good Hope. Um, well, it's quite a long journey, I suppose. And, it, mm. and at the same time, it feels like it happened almost overnight. Mm. Uh, things escalated very, very quickly for me, uh, coming from a campus radio station, jumping onto commercial radio, uh, and within the space or two, uh, sorry, the space of a year or two, moving on to the afternoon drive show. Mm. Um, so the trajectory is very, very sharp. Mm. Uh, I guess maybe my timing was just such that it was in the right time, Talent. right space. Talent, uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit of you creativity <laughs> involved, and working with a really great team, uh, the likes of Guy and Graham yeah. and Sandra, having mm. been around and being able to feed you with information as you grow and develop, yeah. uh, and then having my own team as well. It becomes like becomes a family, right? And it you're does. doing things together. Yeah, and you guys obviously have, uh, got, uh, had a lot of achievements throughout the process. Guy, you obviously won for this year's uh, breakfast show, which was exciting. Sandra also yeah. on that breakfast <laughs> team. Tell us about your relationship together and also your journey through Good Hope. Well, my journey took a lot longer to get to Good Hope FM. I actually thought that I was uh, going to take 50 years to get into <laughs> commercial radio. I yeah. did um, uh, also community radio and then retail radio, which was fantastic for uh, many years. And, uh, you know, you always think the big break is coming. You're waiting for that call. You're waiting mm. for someone mm. to call you and say, God, we want to offer you the breakfast yes. show on the <laughs> National Stage. You never came. Never. Mm. But eventually you managed to, uh, to make it into Good Hope FM. And uh, working at the station, there was always one particular newsreader that I always wanted to work with because of her amazing... Uh, experience and I had the opportunity. Ginny D, yes. Uh, oh, 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 is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, she was already a newsreader. Uh, to work with her would have been amazing. Is she here? I mean, because uh, are we going to talk to her as well? We will, we will. We'll oh, good. Okay, Ginny, no, yeah. just checking. I know um, she makes you nervous, so we can. Whoa, we can yes. <laughs> <laughs> just as well. Uh, and, and then we had the opportunity to work together. And so I have a lot of respect for Sandra Rosenberg. Yeah. I, I, I look up to her. And I respect her. Literally. And I'm a bit I, taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> I look across at her every morning for, yeah. for, for, for a wicked laugh. So yeah. we have a great relationship uh, from, I think, from the mutual respect point mm. of view, mm. um, I hope. Yeah, yeah well. definitely. Uh, well, now you're kind of putting me on the spot, <laughs> yeah. right? You have to say so now. Yeah. yeah. I think she for me, me the journey has been exactly the same. It worked very organically for me. I used to be a journalist, and mm. so news is kind of in my blood, the current affairs. But then to work for Good Hope, a station I grew up with listening, mm. that was just phenomenal. Mm. Working with greats like Dimitri Jagels, mm. um, I, I even can't think of <laughs> any of the sure. others right now. But that's just so fascinating for me. Mm. And I think there are a lot of people who listen to us who welcome us into the house mm. so we really do become part of their family yeah. and it's bizarre you don't really think about it when you meet people you think you're meeting a stranger on the mm -hmm. road but and, and it's weird because they, they get really close story. to you yeah. you know yeah. because they exactly mm. and we're just getting to meet them so yeah they, they it has that element of family really sure. And for radio station to be going on for 50 years is a big thing. I think it really is a big thing, especially for someone like Good Hope, who's here in Cape Town. People are changing. The world is changing. Mm -hmm. Graham, obviously, the digital yeah. age is moving at the moment at a rapid pace. Everyone said that radio will never die. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is, it, is, it, is there a chance for radio to start dying out slowly, slowly? I, I don't believe radio is ever going to die. Um, mm. There's a very special thing about radio, and it, it's an intimate relationship. And anyone who's been on radio will know that that um, relationship you have is with one person at a time. Yeah. And just like Sandra said, now people will come up to you. They know you. You don't know them from a bar of soap. It's like, okay, how do I talk to this person? And they know yeah. everything about you because you're sharing a lot of yourself. And mm. that's why things like iPods and MP3 players and even with uh, social networking and that kind of thing, I mean, you can, you can get music, you can get music videos anywhere at the drop of a second now, especially yeah. with the, the younger generation mm. who are growing up. Mm. But that relationship you have with that personality uh, mm. on a radio station, mm. that's going to be around forever. Mm. And... Um, it's just something so unique. You don't get that warmth and that personality from an iPod playing mm. you three or four songs in a row, no matter how many times you shuffle it up. Sure, yeah. I can yeah. imagine, yeah. yeah. So there's also that live element too. I think a lot of people like the fact that it's live, it's happening, and you can interact with it right then and there. Mm. Uh, Shono, uh, tell me more about some of the stories of your journey through Good Hope and anything that stands out for you that has been your, like, hmm, if I would have stayed Good Hope for, uh, like, well, up to where you are now, 
um, that this was my defining moment that I knew this is what I wanted to do? Because I know you wanted to be a designer at some point. Gosh, yeah, well, I... I, mm -hmm. I, I, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, radio was never even on my, um, on, on my bucket list. It wasn't even part of what I was yeah. thinking I was going to do hate growing up. Yeah. <laughs> I hate people. It was my dream and I didn't get it. Because I was like, always wanted to be on radio and then I'd see people like him on TV going, yeah. oh, you're on radio, I fell into it. You really think about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, it was something that really happened. I used to coach swimming. I used to teach mm. kids to swim. I still have contact with some of those, those athletes to this day. Sure. Um, and that was really special, being, heavy, being able to develop a bond with them as they grew up um, mm. through their schooling and into their varsity years and taking them through the process of, of becoming an athlete and what, it went, uh, what goes into that. Sure. Uh, so when I left that, I, all I really had in the back of my mind was people having told me that if I were to MC or mm. when I speak, my voice sounds good. It's nice to listen to. Mm. So I was like, well, maybe I could do voiceovers. Maybe I could do voiceovers yes. for commercials. Mm. Or my dream is still to do a voiceover for a wildlife documentary. Oh, cool. I haven't yeah. achieved that yet. We want to um, practice that. We're going to practice that later on in the show. I definitely oh, want to awesome. try and put that to the test. Okay, cool. Maybe we should do that later in your next interview. They're going to be sitting on the couch, guys. So don't go anywhere. After the break, Bonnie makes a delicious pear and ginger cake. And we'll be chatting with the Good Up FM family about working relationships. So remember to enter our Go Green SMS competition. For this week's question, head to our website after your next Express.co.za. You definitely do not want to miss out on the grand prize worth half a million rand. Don't go anywhere. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand. And a 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big. Go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. South Africa, are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express Live on 3. We're about to start the first part of our recipe. And remember, if you're cooking along with us, you can find the full recipe and shopping list on afternoonexpress.co.za. Awesome. So what's our first step, Nikki? Well, the best thing to do is to start off with the pears. And we've actually got these ready here. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, pears are in season. And so it's fantastic to have beautiful seasonal fruit. The flavors are fully developed, lovely and sweet. Okay. You can buy pears ready to eat, or you can get them at, um, ready to ripen at home. Uh, this one we've just peeled and, and slit in half. We've taken the inside out and poached it gently in some sugar oh. um, for five minutes. And that is really just to sweeten it. And that's what we're going to add to the cake a little bit later on. Wonderful. Um, baking is really such fun. And mm -hmm. this is, a, is. A, a such an, Im, an easy recipe. So okay. we're going to make it hopefully quite quickly. Awesome. Um, we're creaming up the butter. And we're going to add some caster sugar. Unfortunately, we've got to turn this beater on. It's going to make a bit of a noise now. OK, sure. Here Let's we go. go. Okay. Um, so this butter is already quite soft and creamy. Yeah, I can we're see. We're just going to add in our pasta sugar. Mm -hmm. And the reason we do this is to dissolve the sugar in the butter and make sure that the cake is going to be lovely and light and fluffy. And fluffy, yes. And that needs to just go for a little bit longer. Okay. What I recommend is it's a really great idea to... Um, to melt the butter a little bit in the microwave first, just so it's nice and soft. And soft, just yeah. Just creams up a whole lot quicker. Quicker. Awesome. Okay, into that we're going to add our ginger. I learned another trick the other day that you can also grate the butter into the bowl. It's easier to just put in the microwave. Mm. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm into all sort of things that are quick and easy. <laughs> so we're just I adding... I know people who are like anti-microwaves. Okay, anyway. fair enough. If you're yeah. anti-microwave, <laughs> that's fair enough. All right, so we've added okay. the ginger. We are going to now um, put Whisk. our three free-range eggs okay. into it, okay. and that's going to go in. So I'm just going to put that in, and what you just got to hope is that um, it mixes nicely, doesn't curdle. Yes. All right, that goes in. And I think awesome. it's a good idea at this point to just stop it and just give it a bit of a hand. 
um, to mix it through. Okay. Because you see, do you, do you want to do, do that? that? Yeah, I'll Brilliant. Do okay. That. Perfect. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is combine, we've got some beautiful Greek yogurt here. Okay. We're going to combine the, the yogurt, which just adds a really lovely creamy texture, um, soft and light um, to the cake, and also mm -hmm. a lovely flavor. So we're going to add yogurt, some milk, and some flour, and we're going to put that in together. Okay. And then we're going to add the baking powder at the end. Um, we're doing two little cakes today. But I actually have made this as one big cake. Right. And so that is also an option. And then you don't have to keep the pears whole. You can slice them out and fan them on top. On top. As, a, as an alternative way of doing it if you don't want the whole. I think the whole is really lovely as a single okay. for a dessert. Yes. But if you're wanting to slice it, it's nicer if you've got the yes, pears like fanned out. Tart, yes. okay, okay, so how are we doing here, adding, Bonnie? I think we're fine. Um, okay, great stuff. It's starting to curdle. Is that okay? That's fine. It's not going to curdle. <laughs> I'm going to just put it okay. from this side. So I'm going to add just half of this. Half, okay. Yeah. Um, if you want to stir that in with half of the yogurt. Perfect. Okay, and in actual fact, okay. to make life easier, yes. I think we should beat it with the machine. I, think I also think so. I was about to suggest that. You know, I just told you I'm all into easy stuff. Yeah. Okay, Today's that day. That's it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Whoa, okay, Whoa, so it's okay. a little bit slow. There we go. Yeah. Okay, that's going to mix through really quickly. Awesome. And so we're, we're going to mix that. Anything else we still need to yeah, add? Yeah, we're going to add the last of, of this. Okay. I'm just going to put it in this side. And the ginger, I didn't see. I did the I ginger right at the beginning. Okay. You might not have noticed. I didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's going in. Um, the rest of the yogurt. Okay, one of the big secrets that no one ever tells you about yes. making cakes uh -huh. is that you should never beat them for very long once the flour goes in because oh. it develops the gluten and it makes it can make it quite tough and dry. Oh, so, I yeah. I know that. I know, lots of people don't know that. And then the last thing you're going to do is just put the baking the powder baking in. The baking powder. What's the difference between using baking powder and flour instead of self-raising? The thing is that um, self-raising flour, unless it's really, really fresh, if it starts to absorb moisture, the baking powder becomes ineffective. Oh. So if you buy the, ba the, the self raising and use it straight away, that's fine. That's but otherwise, fine. not such a good idea. Sure. Okay, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Awesome. So we're going to... All right. And of course, visit our website at afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. There awesome. We go. Okay. So we're going to pop that into the oven. No, we're going to pop it in the pans. In the p uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> and then the oven. Okay, Jeannie and Danila are on standby on the couch. Thanks, Bonnie. Now, there can be quite a bit of dysfunction in the workplace due to a mix of ideas, cultures, age groups, etc. But today, helping us work through it and create a better work environment for all is psychometrist Dawn Ellingson. Welcome to Thank our you. loft. Thank and you. And of so course, much. welcome to you guys Thank as you so well. Much. Talking you. about now, dysfunctional. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm wondering. I'm just smiling the whole way through this. I was like, are the producers trying to do something here? It's like, you two on the couch and then you two. Like, what's going hysterical. on? Hysterical. I mean, there must be something dysfunctional. <laughs> by TV and radio <laughs> presenters that we've got us all here. So, Dawn, let's Thank obviously you. start at the top. A dysfunctional yes. working relationships. What exactly is a working family, first of all? And is it necessary to have a working family? Can't you just come in and work and then leave? Well, you can, but it's going to lead to a very isolated experience. Mm. You know, basically, you spend a lot of time at work. Mm. And the whole idea is to... It's not only about doing what you have to do and reaching your goal, but it's it's working together with other people. Mm, so mm. functionality is really important. It doesn't say you have to like them, but it has to be functional. <laughs> um, liking does help. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely. But it, you know, it depends. It very much depends on the culture of mm. the workplace. Some workplaces um, have got a far more hierarchical type of, mm. of structure, and there it's a lot more formal, whereas with yeah. you guys, you really get to know each other, and it's very obvious. I would exist you, but some people don't understand that. Oh, okay, <laughs> well, you can always train him. <laughs> I won't have you speak ill of him. He's I'm part of our quiet, family you know, now. <laughs> when, when, when mommy's talking, the child must be quiet, you know, just listen up. I'm joking. Well done, Jeannie, you've trained him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so well. But when do you cross the line? When do, can you mix personal versus professional? Mm. Okay, you know what, that's a very difficult question and I'm one's always got to remember within the workspace, the bottom line is you are there to do a job. Mm. Mm. And I think where the line is crossed is where you're letting your colleagues down. Yeah. 
So that can be in many different areas. It can be maybe not doing what you're supposed to do or maybe destroying relationships mm. through gossip and things like that, mm. which you really don't want. So with radio, obviously yes. the whole point is you want the show to be the best that it can be. You Absolutely. want the show to bring in listeners. Absolutely. And everybody's got their voice on that show. So Sandra, when you're reading the news, you could yeah. pronounce Genie D Zini day and then get it wrong and then no. the show looks like it doesn't do so well because of, of someone else's voice. How yeah. do you guys work on that relationship? Do you crit each other? Do you not crit each other? Do you report each other? How does we, we definitely do. Um, Sandra has has a very good ability to speak quietly with the other members of the team and I, I actually rely on her <laughs> for that as well. Uh, certain team members who, who, who might uh, swear too much when we are mm. broadcasting <laughs> outdoors, you know, mm. and in, in, in off air, uh, foul language amongst friends is perhaps yeah. acceptable, but when you're around people that you don't know, it's mm. totally unacceptable. Mm. So yeah. mm. the mm. person's not necessarily thinking about it because it's not mm. on air. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it's up to Sandra, who very kindly edges over and says, you know, just listen to yourself mm. a bit. Mediator. Water, water. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I, I like to take focus in the studio um, and I, I, I put a lot of responsibility on each team member. and. I know we're talking family, but I, I, I like the word team more. Yeah. Because I think in a work environment, a team is more effective than a family. Yeah. And I, I just, I, I, you know, I feel yeah, that you, that's... Because you choose to be part of a team. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. A family, you, you, you basically end choice. up with what you have. Yeah. It's no choice. And but family, yes. you're allowed to hold on to problems and yes. faults a lot yes, longer yes. than when you're part of a team. Yeah. Mm. Team, you've got to get on top of it, mm. sort it out, move on. We're still friends, let's move mm. on. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, but also still keeping it professional. I mean, mm. we had an actor here the other day, and he didn't want to speak about his accolades, and he said because awards can turn... Uh, uh, colleagues into competitors. Mm. So I think, it, I mean, how do you deal with that in a team environment where all of a sudden you are then competitors? Because you are essentially, aren't yeah. you? Mm. Mutual yeah. respect. It's, it's about it respect. Really I was does. going to say respect is such a huge thing. Communication, trust, respect. You know, uh, Martin Luther King uh, said that uh, people fear each other because they don't know each other. People yeah. don't know mm. each other because mm. they have never properly communicated mm. with each other. Mm. And I think that's the most critical mm. thing is that off air, we converse with each other Absolutely. around our personal lives. Mm. I understand Sandra when she walks into the studio mm. and she might say in the early morning, I'm not feeling mm. great. Mm. I know exactly how to, to, to deal mm. with her yeah. now. Or she's, oh, Phenomenal, top yeah. of the world, you know, mm. great, right. you know, mm. this is, yeah. and the same with me and the same with the other team members. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's critical to keep the communication. Yeah. Yeah. I know you wanted to say something to that, so. Yeah, no, exactly what he was saying. It's so important to put it out there in the beginning because mm. oftentimes we don't know what our friends or colleagues are going through. And we're just like, why is Jeannie just being such a terrible person <coughs> today. when I really don't Genie understand never. what she is going through. So it's about, um, and, and the same with accolades and when our teammates mm. do well, mm. Uh, mm. I feel really great when that happens because I think in part it's because I was in their life, mm. <laughs> you know, so mm. I share their joy humongously and I feel like when they achieve, I've achieved because mm. yeah. I've learned from them, I, I'm going to try and do some of mm. that. So it's communication, empathy. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And that sense of being part of a team is yeah. that each of you has your own strengths and those strengths are to be but celebrated. Can I, can I maybe ask something quite mm. controversial on that? Because obviously, maybe especially in the radio environment, we're talking about working relationships as well, but in radio you guys are here now. And newsreaders and radio hosts, the radio host gets a lot of the glory. Um, do all news readers want to be radio hosts and does that not create competition? Have you ever wanted to be Guy? Has Guy ever wanted to be on news? Like I don't know if Guy's ever wanted to do news. That's quite interesting. <laughs> but it's, maybe it's seen as it. Maybe it's seen like he gets all the glory for all the yeah. good work you're doing. No, 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 no. I, 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 I often wonder about that, you know, it's a situation of like Destiny's Child, mm. you know Beyonce and then there's not Beyonce and the other one that's also not Beyonce, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really know who all the people <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's different. I've always <laughs> wanted know. to do news. I have a passion for okay. current affairs. So it's about recognizing your strength. And mm. that is my mm. strength. Current affairs, mm. news, that's my passion as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the things you need to 
ascertain when you yes. start your career. Yeah. Mm. You know, exactly. don't be iffy about it. Mm. Yeah. Carve it out, want. know what you want to do, exactly. and then go with your passion. You know why I think Danilo was asking that? Because I think he was excluded from the Marie Claire campaign today. <laughs> yeah. I think he really did want to be in my heels. <laughs> oh, okay, I was listening to that, I was supposed to be the cover, I was like, yeah. No, not the heels. After the break, we follow the heartwarming story of Pemba, the stray dog from Mozambique. Also remember to go out and get your 50 rand off South Africa's number one foundation just by purchasing Revlon Colorstay Foundation now in July at any leading retail pharmacy stores nationwide and enter our social media competition and you don't want to miss out on this amazing prize valued at 25,000 Rand. Take a look. Would you love to win a day in my life? Then make sure you catch our Revlon Foundation Friday series right here on Afternoon Express and enter our competition on Twitter. Very simple. Tweet us a picture of you holding your Revlon Colorstay Foundation, tag at Afternoon Chat, and use our hashtag, hashtag Foundation Fridays, and hashtag Love is On. And you and a plus one can win the ultimate celebrity experience where you'll be treated to 24 hours of luxury. Competition runs until the 20th of August. Find all the details and T's and C's on our website afternoonexpress.co.za So don't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. So get snapping. Express Express Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's all cooking live in this kitchen. So we're in for the exciting part of the recipe. I'm going to bring the cake to you and you're going to plonk the pear in the middle of it. I am, here we go. How do you make sure that you don't do this too early so that it stops rising? Because it can flop, can't it? It can, but mm -hmm. hopefully it won't. Okay. So basically we are just trying to wiggle this in very gently. Okay. Um, and you don't want to push the cake over the pear, you just need to make sure okay. the syrup is drained off. And so we don't want to put in the pear too early? No, because okay. then it will sink all the way to the bottom. Yeah. And then the whole idea is to just sprinkle some sugar over the top. Okay, and much. this is to glaze it? And it will melt and caramelize. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay, and then everyone, whoopsie, it's gone over the edge a little bit, but that's okay. Let's get that's it back okay. in and we'll finish off baking. Okay, perfect. Well done. Great. Meticulously. That's perfect. That's it then. We'll wait Thank for you. that to get all pretty and beautiful. A holiday to a remote part of Mozambique turned into a rescue mission for her Johannesburg family. After finding a badly beaten young Afrikaners dog at a resort in the town of Vilanculus, approximately nine hours drive from Maputo, they named him Pemba. Although saving one dog will not save the world, but for one that, for that one dog, the world will change forever. Take a look at this. Comfortable, happy, and well looked after. A missing eye is the only scar of Pemba's early life. An unwanted dog in Mozambique, this friendly boy was given a second chance after a family's holiday became a rescue mission. Pemba's rescue started off as a holiday in northern Mozambique at a resort called Vilanculos. And shortly after our arrival, we came across a pack of very sad looking dogs, and one of them had been badly beaten, and that was Pemba. And we decided there and then to change our holiday into a rescue mission. When we first saw Pemba, we were horrified at his condition. He was covered in scars, he was still limping, and of course, he had this grotesquely swollen eye, which would have ruptured and got infected. It was huge and white, and he was clearly blind in the one eye, and he was incredibly trusting and friendly. And it was, in fact, very difficult to, to not do something for the dog. A nervous young puppy, Pemba's act of trust allowed the family to get him to a vet for vaccinations and treatment. His saviors returned to Johannesburg waiting for blood tests before bringing him home. We never really knew whether we'd succeed in importing him because there is a fairly high incidence of rabies and of course the other diseases in Mozambique. So we were just happy to have him at a vet where if necessary he could be put down because of his condition. We weren't expecting anything when we got back and we were absolutely delighted to hear that he had in fact passed a blood test, didn't have rabies and then we knew there was, a, you know, was actually a good chance of getting him into South Africa. Now safely in Johannesburg, Ember's blind eye was removed and he passed a thorough health check. He quickly settled into his new life with companionship, nutritious meals and two daily walks. 
But when we collected him, we couldn't really believe that this long journey had come to an end because it was quite a long time and we were never sure if we would be able to get him. So we were very relieved and happy. Pemba is obedient, playful and loving. A far cry from the bad habits and negative behavior which manifested from his young life. His owners were extremely patient and helped him acclimatize to his new environment. Well, other dogs, you're very aggressive at the beginning, very aggressive indeed. And uh, we had to be brought up to, to fight for his food and for survival. And uh, eventually he calmed down and today he loves all dogs. He's not aggressive at all, not in the least. I think it must have been three or four months before he really knew this is his home. But straight away he went from couch to couch, <laughs> so his life became easy. But once he was settled, it was like he'd never not been here. Pemba's rescue and wonderful new home is the exception for the countless unwanted and abused dogs in neighboring countries, where both humans and animals have suffered as a result of war, political unrest, food shortages, and a lack of infrastructure or organizations focused on animal welfare. He persevered and we persevered, and today he doesn't miss that eye. He can't play ball like most dogs, but he's otherwise he's fine. What I really admire most about Pemba is his character. And I think that's what kept him alive and what led him to get a good home. And the willingness of a family to see huh? the spirit of a young dog has been rewarded with a devoted, loving companion who is a source of pure joy. Sit. Oh. Good boy. Bino, keep their tails wagging. What a truly heartwarming story. Pemba is taking part in the annual Walk the Talk event happening this weekend, the 26th of July in Johannesburg. Why not join him to raise funds for charity? It's a family affair, so you can take your four-legged friends along, up to two dogs per person, for some fresh air and a good stretch for their little legs or long legs in the five-kilometer and eight-kilometer routes. All pooches are catered for at the water points, but make sure your dogs are fit enough to finish the walk, trained on a leash, socialized around other dogs, and able to be around large crowds of people. It's bound to be a fun-filled day for the entire family. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from the Good Hope FM team. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on 3. I actually almost said welcome back to Good Hope FM. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are celebrating all things Good Hope FM. And remember to call us on 0839133728. Do you have any questions or comments for our fantastic guests? Well, you guys can also Give go into the call. social media sites. I mean, there's so many comments coming through on Twitter and Facebook for you guys. And I can't wait to read some of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're obviously talking about working relationships and things. We're speaking about Good Hope FM, it's birthday. Um, what exactly does this mean for Good Hope now that we're, now that we're fifth death? Well, it's we because I'm also part of the family now. So it's I'm still we, I'm vintage. Yeah, yeah. you kind of can't. It's a throwback, it's a throwback <laughs> Wednesday or something for the show. Um, Guy, obviously for good up turning 50, what kind of celebrations are you guys doing? It's a landmark, so we're having a, a massive party on the 14th of August at a landmark place in Cape Town, the Cape Town Ooh, Club, yes. uh, and it is open to the public. They're more than welcome to buy tickets and come and join us there. Ooh. There's going to be live acts. I didn't get <laughs> and <laughs> that's because I was going to give you a personal invite later. Oh, <laughs> um, so um, would you like to come to the party with me? Moving along swiftly. Actually, yeah, now. why not? Guys? And let's take <laughs> you guys at home and see what you guys are saying about today. Any questions for our Good Up FM family? We've got Joss on the line. Hello. Hi, Joss. Hi, hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm so great. Graham, can you still remember me? Of course, the red-headed secretary that paid my salary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Joss, what an, what an awesome day to well, have you on the line with us today on Afternoon Express. What are some of your favorite memories of working at Good Hope? Oh, well, one of the favorite memories was with working with everybody. Mark Gilman, Dimitri Jagels, Clarence Ford, Rob Vega, Bongani and Yoli. Yeah. And then, of course, when Randall Abrams turned uh, the program manager, I had the privilege of working with him for four years. Yes. And I think Graham, uh, Graham was the youngest um, DJ ever um, that joined uh -huh. the Good Out team. So yeah. wonderful, guys. It's so great. And I can't believe it. You're 50. You're almost as old as I 
Josh, you know, you worked there for so long, you must have some crazy stories for us. Please share some of the weird and wonderful stories from your time at Good Hope. Joss? <laughs> oh, she clearly knew. You what know. happens at Good Hope FM stays at Good Hope FM, yes. apparently. On Twitter, we've got another tweet from uh, Ramon de Cabura, who at, at MS underscore Monday, who says, Good Hope FM, I'll always remember rushing home from school to Dimitri Jegels mm. at 2.30, dates every day, That's hashtag right. Good Hope FM, hashtag fond memory. Awesome. So there's been so much stuff you guys have done in your 50 years, hey? Well, not, not us particularly. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're still very young, but definitely Graham, as you Thank know. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and, and that's the thing. We're going to be celebrating with uh, a couple of uh, fantastic... We've got a, an amazing competition that starts next week on air. Mm -hmm. 100,000 Rand must go. Boom. No. And it's one of those uh, ones where you've got to answer with the phrase that pays. Because if you don't answer correctly or your voicemail answers for you, yeah. the money just... <laughs> Away so nothing. close yet sorry, so far. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> We've got another Facebook post here for you guys. It's from Charmaine Wilson, and she says, "Wow, 50 years! I was at the 21st birthday bash at the Westridge uh, City Nightclub." in Mitchell's play, and I remember Dimitri Jagels was the uh, MC. Congratulations. Dimitri was obviously very popular, yeah. but you guys really have had incredibly popular uh, guys coming out of Good Hope FM. Mm. I mean, Mark Gilman, Randall, Sereda. Danilo. I wasn't going there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but okay. Yeah. Why does Good Hope seem to breed all these legends? What is it about Good Hope? Oh, sure. I think a lot of, a lot of the, um, the talent comes uh, from Varsity Radio. Mm. Um, Nick Hammond's another one. Uh, on five at the moment, our sister mm. station, who's an up-and-coming star. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that have come through the ranks at Good Hope FM that have gone into radio, not just in Cape Town, but nationally, mm. and then even like you guys gone into the TV side of things yeah. as well. So it's a great starting point, um, and people who've got in at that uh, level have gone on to bigger mm. and greater things as well. Yeah, it's a platform. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And some people bounce off. Yeah. Some people uh, find a, a different avenue. And sometimes you forget that it's not just about being on air, right? There's an entire production mm, that yeah. goes behind that. Exactly. So some people find their feet on air, but they kind of migrate. Mm. Well, to Graham and Sandra in particular, I know when I started at Good Hope FM, you bo were both there. Yeah. And Sandra, you trained up future uh, news readers. Graham, you trained younger yeah. DJs. Mm -hmm. For young people now who are watching, who do want to become radio personalities, yeah, what is your recommendation? I mean, what are the... I think it's different for everybody. So mm. how, what would you recommend would be their course I, of action? I think for me, uh, and it comes from a personal level, um, you need to want it so badly, you must almost be prepared to die for it. I wanted it from the age of five. It was something that happened yeah. mm. on my fifth birthday. I remember it's the one radio memory I have. My parents sent a birthday dedication on a, a radio station. There was this Carpenter song. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> That memory is one of my earliest memories, and from that day, that bug stuck, and yeah. I knew immediately that's what I wanted to do. So what I would say is, you need to believe in yourself, first of all. Mm. Um, you need to have confidence. I'm a complete introvert. It doesn't matter if you're introverted or extroverted. Mm. Mm. If you believe, and you want it so badly, and I think mm. it's like that in, for anything in life. If you want to be a top tennis player, if you're prepared to go for it, mm. and yeah. truly, truly believe in yourself, and yeah. never give up, you really make can it. make your dream and come true. It also is a lot of hard work. I know Sandra, as well as Guy, you guys put a lot of work into your shows. Sandra, you also believe in your news so much that yeah. you do. How much hard work goes in behind the scenes to preparing for a radio show? You're not allowed to line up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in terms sometimes, of research, yeah. where do you find your content? I, sometimes I think people also forget that uh, while your show might be a certain amount of time, you, you're preparing from the moment you go off air. Mm. So everything you see, walking from the shop, reading, the um, newspapers. reading your news, mm. you, newspapers, watching television, everything's part of prep. So it's not like you spend a hour or two hours. No, your entire day is prep. Mm. We, we had a station manager, Anthony Duke, who told me that. He said, you have five minutes after you come off air. And after that five minutes of nothingness, you start mm. prepping for the next show. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exactly what Sandra said. But I also, I mean, I dedicate three to four hours every evening to putting the show together. And that's researching, looking at uh, the internet, finding. It also involves conversations that we've mm. perhaps had mm. after the show in the morning where we've <laughs> gathered for a coffee. And, you know, it's it's... It's not one of those conversations where you go, right, Sandra and the rest of the team, two, yeah. what are we going to talk about tomorrow? I mean, yeah. you guys got any ideas you want to throw into the pot? It's not like that. He it's, uses it's, that So would you like the sugar? The would you like the <laughs> coffee? And then Sandra's like, you know, I actually know somebody who doesn't drink their coffee with, mm. and that spawns a topic. Exactly. And the next thing yeah. you know, you're busy, you know, mm. putting that into the show. And I like to think that you also dedicate an hour to every day watching the show. 
Of course. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Y
Raila will hurry to her, no? You want to skip that? So yeah. what, what Rachel <laughs> wants to know <laughs> is um, when you guys disagree at work or you've had a fight, how do you work it out between you? Is it something you talk about after the show or do you... Um, how yeah. does it work? What do you, how do you deal with tension amongst yeah. you? And how does it affect what you do on the show? I, I think it, it comes down to one person within that team being uh, strong enough to actually step up to the plate. So if it was a dynamic that, that happened between the presenter and any of one of the contributors, the presenter must take the steps to engage with the contributor. If it happened between the two contributors, the presenter must step up and say, right, can the two of you just mm -hmm. join me for a coffee? Let's go <laughs> and talk about what happened there. Mm. Uh, and, and, that, and that's a professional yeah. role that the presenter must take. And it's, it's very important that you look after mm. your team like that because that's how you maintain uh, a good show yeah. Yeah. with happy stuff. But that makes a difference between TV and radio because on radio I'm sure you can go like, listen, they can still speak. And like, <laughs> sir, tell us what's happening in the traffic. You can get going on TV, we can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so but this is don't you feel with TV and radio, if you are, f are actually happy, yes. you will do a better show. Yeah, much better so show. So on a day mm. when you're actually happy and you actually enjoy the company of your co-presenters yes. or co-hosts, you'll have a better show. That's a great thing that now, you know, we don't have to operate via fax and post anymore. We actually have WhatsApp. So we can WhatsApp each other immediately after, as Sandra does all the time, to mm. tell me, you know, you were really amazing <laughs> there. Yeah. And like that, you really, I don't I know why him. you said that. Yeah. I what? check him all the time as well. So it's, it's what kind of things do you check him Ooh. on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I want to know. I just want to go check the stove <laughs> there. On. No, sometimes it's quite subtle because I also have a, I, I don't have a baby brother, so I kind of <laughs> have taken him on as that role. Oh, yeah. So sometimes it's like, uh, I think you need to deal with the situation a little differently, or okay. um, how you approached me wasn't the right way, or I don't like Never that, that, or... Yeah. Mm. There's a couple of expletives normally in between, just for emphasis purposes. Yes, of course, because you are a creative person. Yes, mm. so that's not my fault. Yeah, we've got a few uh, little Facebook comments for you. So, uh, Melanie Damon Skierpus says, Well, I remember the 2006 wedding competition. My hubby and myself made it to the top five. I met Graham White, wow. and then we also spent the afternoon having tapas with the crew, including Sandra Rosenberg Yay. at uh, Andiamo in Greenpoint. Yeah. We never won, but the day will never be forgotten. Oh. Well, they're still married, and congratulations. <laughs> yeah. 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 Still but, together, yeah. but Good Hope FM has had incredible uh, campaigns. I mean, the wedding, yeah. uh, there were house parties. Yes. What were some of the most memorable campaigns throughout you know, the times that you've been there? Shoot, sure, Ginny, still sure. all of the good ones. Yeah. No, but can I, maybe the <laughs> newest I was ones. Part of those. Your yes. superhero stuff, I thought, was, was rad. I thought that was an incredible campaign. Phenomenal, right? Yeah, superheroes was really, really loads and loads of fun. Um, mm. Just helping people out there, making sure that people have got warm, hearty meals. And cheesy spreading too, the love. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's cheesy too. Superheroes. Is, um, but right. the craziest fan competition has also been exceptionally popular over the years. Mm. We've sort of reinvented that as it's gone along. And Good Up FM, like you say, has been around for such a long time. Mm. People are exceptionally loyal to the brand, and they'll yeah. do anything to make sure that they stay part of the brand. Mm. Uh, exactly. So we've had some exceptional experiences and some yeah. bizarre things that people have done along the way. Speak, speaking of which, I know there are a lot of fans who fall in love with radio personalities and speaking of which, uh, Desria Lenfit sent us a message on Facebook and says, I remember way back when I won a pair of trainers on Sugar's Lunchtime Show, my first time winning anything. Then for my birthday this year, I had some members of Guy's Breakfast Team sing happy birthday to Ooh. me on it. That really made my day. But then she says, I just wish I could win a breakfast date Ooh. with Mr. Guy McDonald. Ooh. I can only dream. Ooh. Oh. Hey? Oh, Desiree, <laughs> this can be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> Call into the show now, we can give you his details. Yeah. This is what happens on these shows. <laughs> awesome. So, so guys, in terms of moving forward with Good Hope FM, uh, what can we expect from Good Hope into the next 50 years? Well, of course, there's massive birthday plans yeah. that are on the go at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the massive birthday that's happening on the 14th of August. Uh, yeah. We've got street activations that are coming your way. So make sure that you follow all of our social media platforms at to stay in, informed of what exactly is happening. But you know what? We've been an innovative station for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. I think you can expect more of that mm -hmm. along the way. Already the station is adopting social media technologies. Um, you're capable of using WhatsApp and sending messages directly to the station mm -hmm. who then captures those and plays them out immediately. Wow. Um, so people are being able to interact in various ways. And, and people and don't have to be in Cape Town, sorry to interrupt you, but you don't have to be in Cape Town to listen to Good Hope no. FM. Correct. No. You can Which be rocks. anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to just be more uh, a little bit serious and deep and meaningful there is, you know, just to add on, 
Good Hope FM connecting Cape Town is our pay off line, and it is all about connecting yeah. people mm. to each other. Yeah. We're not one of those stations that when you listen to us, you, you don't feel like you can be a part of mm. what the DJs are talking about. We very much as presenters cognizant of the fact that we've got people from uh, various walks backgrounds, of walks mm. of life, mm. and we're all about trying to connect that, mm. and we'll yeah. continue to do mm. that. So you're not just going to hear pretentious topics and, and the mm. like. It's yeah. really about trying to find what links us mm. as mm. individuals. Mm. To exactly. each other. Human so beings. I've, I've spent a lot of time with you guys, obviously, as my good old family. I know that we all love to eat. Bonnie, how's our food doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. The cake looks absolutely phenomenal, guys. Come and join me. Nikki Russell, thank you so much for the extraordinary pan ginger cake. Yeah. It looks absolutely amazing. Please help yourselves. Yay. This looks absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. This is I'm a jack of all trades. I'm a translator, Translate. chef, <laughs> oh, no. beautiful and can woman. And I say, the one, why the one time I step out of the kitchen, everything just looks incredible? <laughs> hey? It's unfair. No, but you know you have a role. You can actually start cutting yes. and serving yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Guy, would you want to pass me the plate so I can get you guys a... Uh, guys, thank you over. so much, actually, for thank coming you. through to our loft. It has been absolutely wonderful. Thank so much. fantastic to see you guys yeah. again. And of course, to all of our viewers at home, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we will be back tomorrow and Friday, same time, same place, at uh, on, on SABC3. <laughs> Sorry, I've just had this amazing <laughs> task <laughs> placed in front of me. <laughs> Everything's escaped my Good brain. Good night and happy, happy eating South Africa. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. You're giving me the whole tart? Yeah, well, I don't know. Tomorrow on Afternoon Express, Ponang and Lerato Chaniajo settle the score. We share some practical decor tips to restyle your living space. And West Side Stories' Jonathan Rocksmith treats us to a live performance. Uh, never feel good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.